Hello, and welcome to The Lucy Lou Show, the fueling station for your mind, business, and life. And now, here's your host, Lucy Liu. Hello, hello, beautiful souls. Welcome back to episode 148. If you're new here, welcome and stick around for some inspiration to fuel your life. If you've been with me, thank you again. It takes courage to live the life you were meant to live. Is there something you'd love to do but haven't found the courage? Do you want to give yourself over to the fullest possible experience of living? Do you want to take a leap toward a bigger, better, braver life? These are some life-altering questions. And today on the show, I have master integrative life coach Nancy Picard, who reinvented herself as a master life coach in her second half and at the age of 61, climbed Mount Kilimanjaro. Through this experience, she recalibrated her way of being and became her vision for a bigger life. So in case you're not familiar with Mount Kilimanjaro, it is the highest mountain in Africa and the highest single freestanding mountain in the world. And it's very often compared to Mount Everest. Nancy Picard is the best-selling author of her book, Bigger, Better, and Braver. And we're here to share with you our conversation about getting out of autopilot and living your life bigger, better, and braver. Enjoy. Welcome to the show, Nancy. Thanks. I'm so excited to be here. So can you talk about your journey that brought you to where you are today? Sure. I used to own a personal training gym. I was a personal trainer called uh, Tight Ends Incorporated. And I was married. I was raising two kids. I was married 26 years. I was super happy in my life and my marriage. And then my marriage fell apart and I fell apart. So I didn't have the tools and tips and strategies that I have today. And it took me a really long time to pick myself back up and actually learn to love and trust myself again, because I had become very other referenced, which means that I saw myself through the eyes of how my husband saw me. So if I was no longer what he was looking for, then I was no longer what I was looking for. And I forgot, I lost myself. And I forgot that I'm the one that had all the self-confidence and I was the energy and the, you know, the life beneath us. So that took me a long time. And when I stopped working, I didn't work for about nine years after I moved to Colorado and I was just playing. And I just got to a point where I knew that I wasn't using the gifts that the universe had, had given me and that there was more I should be doing and I could be doing. And I got myself a life coach. And then right then and there, I decided I was going to become a life coach. And that started this journey 10 years ago. That's so beautiful. I think everyone needs a life coach. Everyone it's... needs a life coach. Even life coaches need life coaches. That is so true. So you got on this path to living bigger, better, and braver. How did you do it? You know, it was, it's a slow path. You know, it wasn't a quick one and done. It comes with chunking down, taking small steps and staying accountable to yourself. So I learned again, because I'm sure I knew it once in my life, that I could do anything I put my mind to and that I was responsible for all of my choices. And that was the good news, because if I was the one that was responsible, then I would I knew I could make it happen. So I slowly learned to stay in alignment with where I wanted to go and with what I told myself I was going to do. And then I was turning 60 and I thought, oh, my God, that's such an ugly number. And I had to do something for myself to prove to myself that it was just a number and that I still had it all going on and I could do anything. So I decided to go climb Mount Kilimanjaro. And by the time I trained and I found an organization and I went, I had actually turned 61. So at 61, I went and I rocked Mount Kilimanjaro. And it was a really an amazing spiritual awakening for me. And the whole time I was training, I was saying to myself, well, if you don't do this, you won't be able to climb, you know, Kilimanjaro. And if you don't try this, so I, I did all these things outside my comfort zone, one by one by one, to prove to myself what I could do. 
And then I did that. And then I knew there was nothing I couldn't do. And so I wanted to write a book. Really, I was going to call it, What's Your Kilimanjaro? Because that's the premise of it. You know, what, what in your life do you want to do that's bigger, better, braver? And how do you do it? And how do you get outside your comfort zone? How do you move beyond your fears and your disempowering beliefs and your imposter syndrome and all the things that are keeping us stuck on a daily basis? But I realized that if that was the name of my book, no, who was going to read it except unless you actually thought you were going to climb Kilimanjaro. So um, I couldn't come up with the name of the book. And then one night in the middle of the night, I sat up and I said, oh, my God bigger, better, braver. Like that's the name of my book. Wow. Well, first of all, I can't believe you're even beyond 60 because you look amazing. And second of all, wow, that's such an amazing story to tell, right? 60 and beyond can be so amazing. So age has nothing to do with what you choose for your life, because life is bigger and better and braver when you choose to. It's a decision. It's a decision. And I mean, I, I think that I have a lot of compassion for people who are living in their fears, but I think that they wrongly think that other people have no fears. And that's not true. Nobody lives in a fearless state. And so you have to learn how to navigate your fears and move forward with faith that the universe has your back and everything happens for a reason. And if you fall, you fall forward and you're going to be proud of yourself just for trying and that failure is just a stepping stone. So I always ask my clients who are like afraid to do this and afraid to do that. They're afraid to fear. They fear fear of success and they have fear of failure. They don't want to look stupid. They don't want to be, you know, feel shame. And yet, how do you feel if you don't even try? You're going to feel more shame and more regret for not even trying. That's really where the disempowerment comes from. Yes, I'm nodding my head over here. I can't agree more. (laughs) What's your best tip for someone to move beyond their fears? I think you really have to chunk it down to really small, bite-sized steps so that you can prove to yourself little by little by little, that you're capable of doing things outside your comfort zone. And for me, I have, I now cultivate fear. I use fear as a force for change. as a driving force to change me because if I'm asked to do something that I'm afraid to do, I know that growth is on the other side. I know that whatever my little brain is saying, oh, you're not big enough. You're not this. You're not that. They don't know the real you. I know that the moment I step in, I will be that. So that's really my advice to people is don't listen to that little voice and not to ignore your fears, but to just take the hand of them and move forward anyway. Yes. And as life coaches, we have so many tools, right? What specific tool do you use to let fear be the driving force for your changes? The tool is that I feel the fear and I do it anyway. It's like, I know that I know what that fear feels like. I mean, it's not like I'm in a a dark alley and I am shouldn't really be doing that. You know, which fears are fears that you should be listening to and what fears you should not be listening to. And so I guess the fact is that I know that I don't need to be fearless. You know, I don't need to be in a fearless state to to move. And I also know how to ask for support. You know, it's not always um, how do I do something, but who can I ask that can help me? So you have to be able to ask for help. You have to be able to recognize what is just a thought. We are not our thoughts. You know, our thoughts do not have to rule us. And then I do a lot of shadow work. So I do a lot of work with helping people uncover the beliefs that are keeping them stuck. When you uncover them, you can make new empowering beliefs. And I think that that actually is a great tool also. You may need help to do that, to uncover them. But once you uncover them, then you actually are able to move forward because you can you can see why they were formed and how they kept you safe as a child, but what they're costing you now. And when you take them from your subconscious into your conscious mind, they lose that power. 
Yes, I love shadow beliefs. They are limiting us. They're limiting beliefs. And you talked about their disempowering beliefs. So if you want to empower yourself, awareness of these thoughts uh, or beliefs is essential to bringing your life to living bigger, better, and braver. That's it. (laughs) But a lot of times, because we're so used to our old life, we're actually living life in our comfort zone and on autopilot, right? I think the main key is to recognize where you're in emotional autopilot, you know, in your work, in your relationships, with your health, with your body, with your shopping, everything that you do that's mindless, your social media, your eating, you know, everything you do that you're doing on autopilot, it's a way that you're numbing out and you're not looking at what you really need or really want. And you have to stop and ask yourself, you know, what do I need? What, where are my needs? What are they? What's being fulfilled? What's not? Why am I not as happy as I can be? Why am I not moving forward where I should be? And then you can take the steps once you recognize them, because the thing about being on autopilot is you're not paying attention. You're on autopilot. You're really not engaged and you have to get engaged and ask yourself those questions. You know, why am I doing this? Is this moving me forward or keeping me stuck? Is this keeping me in my fears or keeping me in my power? What's it doing? Why am I doing this? But if you don't ask yourself those questions, you're just going to stay on autopilot and just cruise right through to nothingness. Yes. And that's why I say everything beautiful starts with awareness. Mm, I like that. Yeah. Yeah. And I consciously try to make a list of things, my limiting beliefs that I can break, my fears that I can, like you talked about, use as a driving force to Mm -hmm. make change. And I think it should be fun, right? If, If you're not doing it, if you're on autopilot, it's not fun. Whereas if you're shattering your disempowering beliefs, and if you're overcoming struggles and killing your fears, it should be so much fun. Right? Yeah, it's Not very in- empowering. Yes, I love yeah. it. It's like a superpower. Yes, and I also believe that in order to live bigger, better, and braver, it's super important to set roles and healthy boundaries in life. Would you agree with me? Totally, but you actually have to get out of autopilot <laughs> to set healthy boundaries because when you're in autopilot, you're not aware of what those boundaries are or what's being crossed. So if you're angry, if you feel guilty, if you're an overwhelm, if you're disappointed, if you're having any of those feelings, that's a signal that somewhere your boundaries are being crossed. So that's a really good way to catch yourself and then look further. Okay, I'm an overwhelm at work, or I'm an overwhelm at home with my children. So where can I set healthy boundaries? And I think part of the problem is that we think people who know us really well, they should know what we need, but it's not true. People are not mind readers. And so if you're on autopilot, you're, you don't even know what your needs are. So you have to get clear with your needs are, and then you have to ask for what you need. And, you know, as a boundary coach, that's one of my certifications. I help people with scripts about their boundaries. I feel X when you do Y, would you be willing to do Z? So I've not made them wrong. I've made it about me. I feel overwhelmed. I feel disrespected. I feel sad. I feel scared when you do this. Would you be willing to do that? But if you don't get quiet enough to know what your needs are, you're not going to know what to ask for. Yes, I love that. So in your days, in and out, in your business and helping other women, what is your favorite quote that you go by? Oh, God, I have so many quotes. But I personally, one of my own quotes is that the juice is in the journey, which means stop worrying about the end game. and just enjoy the ride and know that whatever happens is supposed to happen. So, you know, sometimes I'll do something and I might put a lot of energy and time and money like business wise into it and it flops 
And, you know, obviously I'm human and I will say, oh, you know, I can't believe that happened and I'm disappointed, but I pick myself up and then I use that as a stepping stone. Okay. Why didn't that work? What do I need to do differently? Maybe that was protection. Maybe it wasn't rejection. Maybe it just wasn't my time. Maybe something better is coming down the pike. So I work on that. And that's why I say the juice is in the journey. You know, it's when you get there, you get there, but you may not be ready to be there. Beautiful. Thank you for your wisdom, Nancy. Where can we find you at? Well, my website is nancypicardlifecoach.com and everything is on there. All my different coaching modalities, my courses that are online and a free discovery call, free chapter to my book, all those things, buying my book, all my links to everything are there. But you can also follow me at Nancy Picard Life Coach on Facebook, Instagram, LinkedIn, um, you know, everything. Thank you. Thank you. To all the beautiful souls listening, thank you for joining me on this episode of The Lucy Lou Show. When I'm not podcasting, I am coaching high-achieving women in life transitions, getting unstuck, kissing overwhelmed goodbye, and living a more joyful and fulfilled life through strategic goal setting and mindset transformation. It would mean the world to me if you subscribe, rate, or share this with a friend. And don't forget to join me for the next episode. Remember, there is always a way and more blessings are coming your way. For free resources and show notes, head over to lucylucoaching.com. 